Hey everybody, welcome back to Brainiac Baseball's 1969 Seattle Pilots What If Scenario. Today's matchup is between the Chicago White Sox and the Seattle Pilots at Six Stadium. On the mound for the White Sox today is Paul Edmondson, whose record is 2-3 and three with a 370 ERA. And pitching for the Pilots today is Gene Brabender, whose record is 3-0 with a 225 ERA. And so, yes, we took a big loss yesterday. I don't even want to talk about it. We've lost um, all four games of the series to the Indians. We've lost seven out of eight. Overall, we're, not, we're now below 500 for the month of May. Um, I have nothing good to say. We've actually <laughs> pretty much tanked our season at this point um, with the terrible loss yesterday. Uh, our Pythagorean is now uh, 20 and 24 uh, based on our run differential. When you, when you uh, spot the team 11 runs or uh, 10 runs, <clears throat> um, you, your Pythagorean drops quite a bit. So now our expected win out, um, outcome should be 20 and 24 at this point. So, uh, so uh, technically speaking, we're playing above um, our our uh, our run differential. So now something that um, came up. Last time that Paul Edmondson pitched for the White Sox, I believe that was in this series here, we uh, did a deep dive on him and we talked about how he died prior to spring, spring training 1970. And I hypothesized what would happen if we actually killed him off. So uh, I want to know, like I want to know what will happen if we set a death clock for Paul Edmondson. So we're going to do that. Um, and this way you'll know and I'll know. And um, we can uh, quell our curiosity here. So we're going to go in and edit the player. Here we go. Uh, yeah, we need to go into commissioner mode to do this. And into edit stats. And then we'll scroll on down here. There's his birthday. And it says his death year. It here is um, 2006, but in reality, he died in 1970, in February of 1970. So if we make it 1970, there we go. Um, what will happen to him? See, the uh, final game played is correct because it would have been this year that we're in. He debuted, and his final game was in September, and then he never got a chance to play again in the majors. Um, is there anything that... Okay, I just want to make sure we have all of the, the correct information. So that when we do this, it, it, the, whatever the result is, um, will be interesting. Has anybody out there ever done this? I mean, any of the people who who play this and follow me? I'm curious um, if you already know the answer, but if not, we're going to find out together. So now we have <laughs> the death clock started for Paul Edmondson. And if anybody who's a family member of Paul Edmondson, we're not doing this, um, you know, to celebrate his death. We're doing this out of curiosity for the game. We just saw uh, Paul Edmondson come up last series, uh, the first time we've seen him in the sim. And we want, I, I just kind of want to know. So uh, no disrespect to Paul Edmondson or his family. We, we're just trying to figure out how the uh, inner workings of this game uh, affect uh, what happens from season to season. That's all we're trying to do here. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of um, league editor mode. So we're not going to find out until after the season's over. Um, but um, something to look forward to as far as uh, how that all plays out. So let's go ahead and get today's game started. As always, I appreciate everyone following along. Like and or subscribe to the channel. I mentioned yesterday that um, on the baseball, I'm sorry, on the uh, Brainiac Baseball main page, there's a little section that says posts. And on there is a poll where you can choose a, a one of four options on what uh, brings you to my channel, uh, maybe either initially or while you come back, and uh, what content you prefer. Um, is it 
the Seattle Pilots series, the Detroit Tigers season replay, the Detroit Lions alternate history, or is it any of the sports card breaks uh, that I do? Um, and I'm just curious because I'd like to create, uh, you know, content, uh, you know, for uh, people who are actually expecting to see certain things. And I haven't really done that many uh, sports card uh, content lately. Although I did just order a rack pack of 1984 tops, which uh, I will order. I will open as soon as it gets here. So I'm excited for that. We got Gene Brabender on the mound. Our only good pitcher left. So maybe he's the guy that can get us right today. Or on the other hand, he is due to get his ass kicked. So one way or another, we'll figure it out here. Uh, Dick Bates, who played in his first game yesterday uh, in the majors, is unavailable. And the same with Steve Barber, who is um, recovering from his last terrible start. So we're down two pitchers today. We need Brabender to give us a little bit of length. Here's our lineup versus Paul Edmondson. Uh, it is, I guess, our same lineup as yesterday. Um, this didn't work out so well for us yesterday. We only had two hits. So we're going to try it again today. We're going to run it back, see how that works out for us. Let's go ahead and do the lineup rundown for the Chicago White Sox. Batting leadoff, playing third base is Pete Ward. Batting second at first base is Bob Spence. Batting third in center field is Mac Jones. Batting cleanup, playing shortstop is Woody Held. Batting fifth in catching is Don Pavlitich. Batting sixth in left field is Carlos May. Batting seventh in right field is Walt Williams. Batting eighth at second base is the rookie George Orta. And batting ninth is the pitcher, Paul Edmondson. Okay, let's take a look at Gene Brabender. Nothing but good things to say about Gene. <laughs> Pardon me. He uh, started the year in the bullpen, and now he's making his eighth start of the year. 3-0 with a 2.25 ERA. Uh, 38 st uh, strikeouts and 56 innings pitched. Opponents are only batting 186 against him, but he walks a lot. So his whip is right up there anyway. Um, if we take a look at his log... He made his last start against the White Sox, giving up four runs in seven innings with eight hits and four walks. So one of his worst performances of the season. Uh, it was a no decision, so he hung in there uh, long enough to at least make it a ball game. Uh, you can see here his ERA has gone up every single appearance, up to a 225 right now. Um, does not have a fastball. His best pitch is a slider. He's got a sinker that's above average. Overall, an 82. Brob Ender's 27, and he goes to arbitration at the end of the year. I'm actually thinking about giving him a contract already, but I think we better hold off and wait and see whether or not he tanks it in the second half of the season. Let's take a look at the defense for the Pilots today. Pretty solid all the way around. Rollins had two errors, uh, one costly yesterday at third. Uh, otherwise, we are good all the way around. Now, um, shoot, I probably should have put Harper back in there, right? I forgot to do that because we did give Harper an extra day off. Now he's got three days off in a row. So he'll come off the bench if we need him. Okay, here we go. Pete Ward leading off against Gene Brabender. And a base hit to start the ball game. So we already know how this is going to go. Can we give up less than 11 runs? That is the question. Runner on first. Here's Bob Spence. Well, Spence strikes out. That means a walk is due. Here's Mac Jones. Off to a bad start. Batting 192. There's the walk. That was always going to happen. There was nothing we could do to stop it. First and second. It would be nice to get a double play, but for some reason we do not turn double plays. Woody Held batting 211. Strikes out. Wow, that pitch. That's a generous call there. Um, that slider must have just caught the strike zone according to the game. So that's two down. Will there be another walk by Brabender here? It's, it's Don Pavlitich. One for three with a walk against Brabender. 
Batting 284, maybe the best hitter on the team. He hits a fly ball to center. And Brabender is going to get out of it. There we go. We go to the bottom of the first. No score. Let's take a look at the Pilots lineup rundown for today's ballgame. Betting leadoff at first base is Mike Hegan. Batting second at third base is Rich Rollins. Batting third in center field is Tommy Agee. Batting cleanup playing first base is Darren Johnson. Batting fifth in right field is Don Bosch. Batting sixth at second base is Van Kelly. Batting seventh at shortstop is Don Kessinger. Batting eighth and catching is Jerry McNertney. And the pitcher Brabender in the nice spot. Okay, take a look here at Paul Edmondson. We covered him last time, as I mentioned before. Uh, this is his 11th start. This was the only season he pitched in real life. Uh, he's 2-3. and three with a 370 ERA, more walks to strikeouts. Opponents are batting 209 against him. He has a complete game. That fastball is electric. It's uh, tops out at 94, and it's rated at 94. He's got a screwball, it's just as good, rated at 88. Overall at 87, the 26-year-old righty goes to arbitration in 1971, but he's not gonna make it, is he, folks? Let's take a, take a look at his log. Um, he's only faced this one time. Yeah, it was last week, of course. He went eight innings, giving up five runs on seven hits and eight walks. Wow, that was his last start. It was against us. So, not a good performance there for Edmondson. There's the defense. Uh, we got Pavlitich behind the plate. He's the worst defensive catcher uh, that we've come across so far. He's got a 67 arm, but he throws this out every single time. And, of course, what he held at short, not so good. Okay, here we go. Mike Hegan leading off against Paul Edmondson. And a line drive into center field. How come we never start off the game with a hit? That would be nice occasionally. Well hit ball, though, as Rich Rollins steps in. Rollins gets the base at the center, so it only took two batters to get our first hit. Rollins on first for Tommy A.G. 1-1 one, one count to A.G. and a ground ball that gets past the third baseman. Rollins has to hold at second. Little rally going here for the Pilots. First and second. Here's Darren Johnson. Now Johnson is 3-for-3 three three with a walk against Edmondson. We need a big hit here. A base hit into left. Rollins around the corner. Oh, he holds it third. They throw the stop sign up. Who's the left fielder? Oh, it's May, right? He's got a below average arm. Maybe could have made it. There was only one out. It would not have been worth the effort. Okay, so three consecutive singles. Everybody moving up a bag. Here is Don Bosch with the bases loaded. Um, we're going to let him take a cut. We're not going to try for a sack fly here. Oh, 2-2 two -two count. Ground ball to third. That's a double play. Oh, nope. They just go home to get the run. Bosch has good speed, so that's why he beat it out. And that will leave it up to Van Kelly, who is batting 265 versus righties. And he has been pretty clutch in some situations. So I'm saying there's a chance. Here we go. Van Kelly. 3-0, and he walks in a run. That's ridiculous. Yesterday, we only scored a run, and it was scored on a wild pitch. So we didn't even get an RBI for that. At least Kelly gets an RBI here. So here's Kessinger. He's 1 for 15 since uh, the trade. This would go a long way in endearing himself with the Pilots faithful, and he strikes out. We do get the lead on the walk and it's one to nothing going to the top of the second okay here's carlos may leading off may williams and ort uh there's another walk so another leadoff man gets on sooner or later we are going to pay for that runner at first i can't imagine may is going to be running here one two count to williams and he strikes out on the slider so it's all or nothing right now for broadbender Either walks or strikeouts. Runner on first. 
here's George Orta. He's an 18-year-old rookie. He didn't even make it to the majors in real life until 1972. So he is way ahead of schedule. But, I mean, look at that peak. And in real life, he did have some power. So, I mean, a lot of this will develop. Pretty solid player uh, for the White Sox in the future. Here we go. Runner on first. Full count. Striking him out. I thought that was going to be a walk. For sure, we should have more faith in uh, Brabender. He is actually getting it done this year. And the pitcher, Edmondson. And he strikes out five Ks for Rob Andrew through two innings. We go to the bottom of the second inning with Jerry McNerty. Coming up with a 1-0 lead. McNerty popping it up into foul ground on the first base side. One down. That will bring up Brabender. He's looking for his first hit. He did walk his last time. Uh, his only time facing Edmondson. 0-2 count, and Edmondson strikes him out for out number two. And Hegan struggling against Edmondson. He's 0-5. for 5. I'm kind of bored seeing the same pitchers, but we, we do have... Um, it is nice to have something to reference down here. Um, so Hegan walks. So there's the old walk, strike out, strike out, walk. There's two outs, so we can't hit and run with Rollins like we normally would. We're going to let him take a cut here. And he pops it up on the infield, carrying to shallow center field for out number three. We go to the bottom of, I'm sorry, the top of the third inning. And it's the top of the lineup with Pete Ward leading off against Brabender. Brabender at 41 pitches and another strikeout. Okay, I'm liking what I'm seeing here. Brabender, maybe effectively wild today? One down for Bob Spence. Spence strikes out looking. There's seven Ks. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so he has struck out seven of eight batters so far. And Mac Jones, with an 0-1 count, makes contact. Flips it into center field. Is that going to fall in? It will be caught by A.G. for out number three. We're going to the bottom of the third. Game is moving along. Tommy A.G. leading off, and there's a walk. Third walk for Edmondson. We've got to send him, right? 78% chance. Pavlitich has a 67 arm. That is so horrible. And yet, and he's thrown out 27% of the people. Look at his defensive range and defensive war. Uh, it, that's atrocious. But here we go. Let's see if um, AG can get a good jump. He's going. Fastball low and AG steals second base. That is his 14th stolen base on the year. 14 for 20. That may be the American League lead. I don't know. I haven't looked at the leaders in a while. So we do have a runner in scoring position. Let's see if um, Darren Johnson can at least hit it to the right side here. 2-2 Two -two count. He strikes out. Okay, now we just got we just have to let Bosch take a cut. Nothing fancy, just to get a hit. He pops it up in the foul ground. Out number two. Here's Van Kelly. He walked and Technically got an RBI for that. Let's see if he can get another one here. And a comeback to Edmondson. We have stranded four runners today. Three of them in scoring position. We go to the top of the fourth with Woody Held leading off. Held walks. So when you don't give up hits, remember, you give up walks. So he's still averaging... A one whip for the day. So you think he's pitching good, but he's really not. And the leadoff man is on again. Here's the catcher, Pavlitic. There's a base hit. Oh, no, it's going to be a grounder to short. Can we turn two? Oh, that's the uh, agony to the ecstasy right there. With the catcher running, uh, we were able to turn the double play. So, 
Bases are cleared for Carlos May. And May strikes out eight Ks for Brabender. Getting the job done, but we're holding on to the slimmest of leads. Here's Don Kessinger leading off. Pulls it into right field. One out. I feel like that was our only shot was in the first inning. We're not getting another chance the rest of this game. I don't know why we couldn't, um, you know, come through, but we're not getting any more shots unless we could get Edmondson out of the ball game. We're going to the fifth inning. Here's Walt Williams at 7, 8, and 9 do up. And the leadoff man is out again. So stupid. This game is so dumb. We're going to pull third base in. I don't think he's going to lay down a bunt with Edmondson up, but who knows. Williams could be going here, too. 2-1 count and a ground ball to short. Can we turn two again? Yes, look at this. Is a Brabender, is he a ground ball pitcher? Yeah, around 50% of the time. And the pitcher, Edmondson. Oh, we get some wood on it. I thought that was going to be K number nine. Instead, it's just a ground ball to short, and we're going to the bottom of the fifth. Back to the top of the order with Mike Hegan. Hegan's walk today. Still looking for his first hit versus Edmondson. That could be it. Is that going to fall in? Oh, it's going to be caught. Come on. Give the guy a break. One down. Next up is Rich Rall. Popping it up to short. Woody Held. Closes the glove for number two. And AG strikes out looking. We're going to the six. Game is really cruising along right now. P. Ward leading off. Can we keep the leadoff guy off the base path? Ground ball to first. There we go. Johnson making the play. There's one down. Here is Bob Spence and a base hit to right. So we just delayed it. One batter. That's all we did there. Oh, and an error. An error on Bosch. And Spence is at second. So that's a run. It's going to tie it up right there. There's nothing we can do about that. As Brabender strikes out Jones. I'm considering walking Held to get to Pavletic. But Held is such a terrible hitter this, this season compared to Pavletic. And Brabender's having a good game. So, I don't know. Maybe the game is going to allow us to get Woody Held out. I, I don't think so. Full count. Well, he walks him anyway. I mean, I'm, I'm okay with that. Because that's kind of what I... I was thinking there. All right, so. Well, this is what we wanted. I mean, there's nothing we can do here but push a button. But maybe we can get a ground ball. Here we go, first pitch swinging. And a ground ball to second. Van Kelly makes the play. I mean, where would we be without Brabender? I don't know. Here's Darren Johnson walking. So we have the leadoff man on for Don Bosch. We're going to pull Bosch from the game and bring in Tommy Harper, who should have started the game. That is my bad. I'll own it. I forgot to uh, double check the lineup. Now, Harper's 0 for 4 against Edmondson. 3-1 count, and he walks him. Wow. So maybe Edmondson's beginning to really lose it here. He's walked five so far. Kelly, we're going to try to have him sack bunt here. Here we go. Lay down a bunt. Right back to the pitcher. 
And it works. So we have runners in scoring position for Kessinger, who not known for having any power. Um, shoot. I mean, they're playing back. So a ground ball should score a run. If he hits it anywhere to third, it should score a run. Here we go. 2-2. Two -two. Uh, well. And McNerton. They should walk him. This game, I mean, <laughs> I don't even know what to say anymore. But we've wasted another opportunity, and um, maybe that's a momentum shift the game has sometimes. It's, maybe it's going to happen right now. So we have Harper out there in right. He is not... Um, his ratings are not as good as Bosch, but Bosch made an error in his first, second game in right field, and Harper has not made an error all year. So, you know what? Maybe we've upgraded. There's a ground ball into the hole. It's short. Good defense. Uh, Kessinger not helping us with the bat, but has been pretty damn good defensively. There's one out, and let's see if he can... Do another. There we go. Back to back ground balls. Easy plays for Kessinger. And then George Orda flies out to center. Cruising along. Hey, we're going to let Brabender bat again. Come on. Somebody help Brabender get a hit. Flying out to right. Williams with the catch. One down. Here's Mike Hegan. Hegan walks again. Six walks now for Edmondson. We can definitely hit and run now. That's what we're going to do. Come on, Rich Rall. Ground ball to first. Well, another runner in scoring position. We just are not clutch at all. And AG's going to strike out. Oh, no. Ground ball up the middle. So, we have officially knocked out Edmondson, for what it's worth. I guess he knocked himself out with those six walks. They're going to bring in Gail Hopkins. I like this baseball card. Look at that. You got the old first base mitt. Stretching. That's a cool card. Wouldn't mind that for my collection, I guess. Okay, here we go. So, Broadbender, he, now he's at 102 pitches. And with our season down the toilet... I think we let him pitch until his arm falls off or he gives up the runs. Here we go. Oh, now he's tired. And a base hit down the line. So that'll do it. A pinch hit double. That is his first of the season. And we can't pull the outfield in. We just got to pitch to him. And that's it right there. So it's all tied at one. And there's nothing we can do now. So we'll just let it get over with. Fly ball for Mac Jones. Will Ward tag? Nope. Woody held. Runners on first and second. Ground ball, base hit. That'll give him the lead. Two to one. And Pavlitic dumps it into left center field. Will that fall in? No, it'll be caught for out number two. And Carlos May hits a three run bomb. Five to one. And then a base hit down the line. And another hit to left. Oh, they batted around this inning because here's Gail Hopkins again. All right. Well, now we got a bunch of lefties, so. Fly ball to center. 
So they score five and bat around in the eighth inning. Bob Locker into the ball game. He's sort of their closer, I think. Take a look at him there. Yeah, they have a, you know, they hit a three-run home run uh, with Williams, and we have a guy with a 90 power who has never hit a home run for us. One, two, three inning. Top of the ninth. Pop up from Spence. We're going to the bottom of the ninth inning. Kessinger popping it up. So we got three hits today. We had two yesterday. Yep, our team is toast. Down to our last batter. Well, we're gonna, we're, we'll give that a bat to uh, Wayne Comer. And he strikes it. That's a fitting way to end the ball game. So we lose five to one. And the losing streak continues. Remember, I said yesterday, or I've said a couple times, 15 and 12, we're gonna be 12 and 15 this month. So we're still gonna go four and five. Uh, wait, is there even uh, nine games? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So that's what's gonna happen. We already know it. Take a look at the standings, continue to fall. Uh, National League, how about our Padres? They can't, they can't get two wins in a row. They can't scrape two, two wins together. So they're sitting at 11 for our contest. Um, all right, headline news. Brainiac Baseball Daily Beat. A 4-3 to three squeaker. Twins are three games back. Looks like Dean Chance pitched well. Things are happening. Uh, that's it. Okay, transactions. Uh, Bobby Locke of California fractured his hand. And he's going to be out for a couple of weeks. I don't know if he was... E yeah, he's not even in the majors. So, no big deal. Okay, we're going to pull up the box score and get out of here. Whoa, I almost flipped my laptop over. Um... Let's go ahead and pull up the box guard and get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. Another disappointing loss for an expansion team. Player of the game. Uh, I'm going to say nobody again. Uh, this is our back-to-back -back nobody games. Uh, our only run came on a walk. Our only run yesterday came on a wild pitch. The error by Bosch sucked. Gene Brabender was moving along pretty good there. Then he couldn't throw strikes. And he was soft tossing it, and they um, took care of it. Oh, it was Carlos May who hit his uh, third home run. I thought it was Williams. I couldn't remember. So, uh, yeah, that'll do it. We're going to come back tomorrow. Uh, and tomorrow we're going to play the 1980 uh, Detroit Lions alternate history game where we're going to face the Pittsburgh Steelers who uh, right now have a first round bye in the playoffs. So um, that should be a fun game. Probably going to get our butts whooped, but it should be fun to play. And you got to love all those great uh, late 70s, early 80s Pittsburgh Steelers. So that's going to be a fun game. Uh, until then, everyone have a great day.